Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Matthew Boyle from LanguageCardGames.com, where we believe if you can play cards, you can learn languages. And today we're going to do another overview video of all the games. There's been a new game released since the last overview video, Language Guardians 2, and also a viewer commented on the last overview video that they would have liked to have seen the front of cards more closely, so I'm going to try to take care of that now. Right off the bat, I'll tell you there's going to be timestamps down below, so you can immediately go and jump to the game you think you, you may be most interested in, or you can sit tight because we're about to go through them all. So why are we doing this vid? Uh, well, I'm going to quickly explain each game and show you a few of my favorite cards from each game close up. If you want to learn even more about these games, there are plenty of videos about each one now. Just do a search on this channel or go to the playlist section. You can learn a lot more and see a lot more close-ups. You can also go to the website, languagecardgames.com. If you go to the shop pages there and look at the product photos, it allows you to zoom right in so you can see the cards very closely. Um, so, uh, and also these are my cards. These are the ones that I play with often with a lot of different people. So they might, you know, they have a little bit of wear and tear. They've been well loved. If you see they're a little bit scuffed up or you see some scratches or whatever. I've been using these a long time, so I'm not going to open new games just for this video, you know. Uh, before we jump in, uh, I want to warmly welcome you to like and subscribe to this channel so you can find your way back. And consider visiting languagecardgames.com too. If you subscribe to the pop-up pop-up box there when you come to that the language card games homepage, you can get a free PDF of half of the Language Guardians one game for free sent to you. And I last I want to mention we ship for free to any location worldwide. Okay, so before we dive into each individual game, these are all the games that we currently offer. Some are available in a downloadable print-and-play form, and some are available in other languages. But most of the games are designed to work for any language that you want. Um, so as long as you can understand the language printed on the cards, you're going to be able to use these decks to review and enrich any target languages you want with your friends, and they can even be studying different foreign languages from you. This is meant to bring everyone to the table, and there's a lot of different interesting word categories players are asked to speak in. And the players teach each other, and the players judge each other. It is the social power of these games which is so unique. The only games which are a little bit different is like Chinese Champions. This one's more aimed at Mandarin Chinese specifically. Um, but yeah, all the others you can use for any language. Uh, Lightner cards and Fighting Flash cards you can even use for any subject. You don't even have to use those for languages per se. Alright, give me a minute to move the camera angle a little bit and we will look at these games much more closely, starting with Language Guardians 1. So Language Guardians 1. This, the Language Guardians series is what I would recommend to most people to start out with our products. Let me bring it over here. Okay. Let's make sure, let's get it even closer. There we go. So yeah, you can see they're a little bit dirty. I probably play this one the most. It's most acceptable for the majority of people. Why? Because it's pretty simple. It plays similarly to a game like Uno or Crazy Eights. You speak words in your target language before you can put your cards down. The cards prompt you to say something. You put your cards down. And when you have put down all your cards, you win. And there's some wild cards that let you change the color that you're putting down. And um, yeah, it's, it's very simple, very fun to play. We have a lot of videos about this on the channel. So some of my favorite, um, well, before I show you the cards, this can, one deck of this game would be good for two to six players, ages eight and up. 
with all the games. I, I think younger people can definitely, younger than eight can definitely play, but it just, it takes better teaching from an, from an older, more experienced player. So I generally recommend eight and up for this. So here's some cards. Say a weapon, let me get this even closer. I wanna make sure I do right by the last commenter. Say a weapon name and place this card on the card with the same element or name. We use the word element in this game instead of colors. So this one is say the name of a weapon. Use a person's name in a sentence. And describe a place. You can always pause this video if you want to take longer to read the cards. So in this game, every color represents a different type of word. Green is nouns, blue is verbs, black and white is adjective, uh, adjectives, red is sentences, and the pink are wild cards. And on the bottom of the cards is a little bit of flavor text, some storyline to support the game because we write stories to that weave into these games. All right, so that's Language Guardians 1. I definitely recommend this for casual gamers, beginning language learners. It works for just about everybody. Let's look at Language Guardians 2. Oh, I should mention that language... Let me yank this back really quick, sorry. What, what versions is this available in? This has a print and play version available, and it's also been printed... There are also professionally printed versions of this game in French and Italian. Okay, now Language Guardians 2. So this is our newest game. Same as the other one, I recommend, you know, it's totally compatible with the last one. I recommend it for players eight and up, two to six people. Um, if you want to play with more people, you need more cards, you could shuffle two decks together. You could shuffle this deck together with the last one, maybe. Um, and this one is in, available in print and play form, so you could buy a print and play version of this to start playing right away. So this is an example of a wild card. This one asks you to say an address. So could you say your address in your foreign language or target language? Say an address, put this card on any card, choose a new element, that basically means color, and reverse the direction of play. The wild cards have some special abilities. Describe an emergency. Again, the black and white, that color symbolizes adjectives, so you need to use an adjective to describe an emergency. So you could say, like, scary. And use, a, use the name of a type of transportation in a sentence and put this card on a card with the same element or name. All right. If you have any questions about any of these games, feel free to drop it in the comment section. Moving right along to Fighting Flashcards. Fighting Flashcards is a game that you use with stacks of physical flashcards that you already have. It can be, you know, they have to be the two-sided kind of flashcards, and it, you might be making them for languages, but it, it could also be for, like, a history exam or a med medical school or something like that. Anything you would make two-sided flashcards for, any subject or language, you could potentially use with this game. But you got to have your flashcards together with these to use this game. And what you do is you you kind of review your flashcards in a battle against somebody else and their flashcards. These flashcards give you challenges that you and the other players have to complete with your flashcards, and the first person to get through all of their flashcards wins. But some pretty crazy things can happen. You have, you have to pay attention sometimes to other people, even other people's flashcards. So even if my buddy's studying Spanish and I don't know Spanish really that well, sometimes I have to pay attention to his cards because if I don't, they might get put into my deck and slow me down a little bit. So you get to battle with your flashcards. It's really cool. Here's some of the cards. Ridge Runner. Okay, I'll read it to you. 
if you have more flashcards in your flashcard deck than another player, you may test flashcards, discarding the correct ones, until you get one wrong or your flashcard deck has the same number of cards as that player. And if you get a flashcard wrong, recycle it. So what does this mean? It, it means you, you basically get to ride a horse. You get to test your flashcards until you have the same number as flashcards as your opponent. So it lets you catch up to your opponents. If you have more flashcards than them, like you have 10, they have five, you can test up to five flashcards. This is the dragon. Anytime a player tests a flashcard wrong, they're knocked out of the game. This is what I call a world peace card. If you draw a world peace card, it stays on the field and it permanently alters the rules of the game. So if this dragon card comes up from now on, anyone who gets a flash card wrong is knocked right out. However, there are some cards in this deck that can allow knocked out players to come back in. So again, they kind of have to keep, pay atten keep paying attention to the cards that are coming up. It could be useful to them later. And last, I really love this card, Flame Cast. All players burn their top flash card and test their next flash card at the same time. The fastest correct player discards their tested flash cards. All other players recycle their flash cards and one of their discarded flash cards. So I know there's some terminology, terminology in here you might not know. To burn a card means you take the top card, which you're basically using as a cover card. You take it away to quickly reveal the next card so everyone can test it at the same time. So this card is like a race. All the players immediately remove their top flash card and immediately test their next one. And the first player to say it and say it right wins this challenge. I love that card, it's really fun. Players can also create their own decks using, you know, with actually with all the games, you can create your own mini decks to battle other players. You don't have to use all the cards in here. There's a lot of cards, so it can actually be a little overwhelming if you try to learn them all at first. Better to create your own mini decks. Okay, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate your support. And now let's look at Other Tongue 1. So the Other Tongue series is similar to, I would compare it to games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Star Wars, card games like that. They're more complex. This game is like those games in terms of complexity, but it is not the same. This game has different rules, the cards function differently, it will take you a little bit of time to learn for sure. So this one is really for people who are not only more experienced with their foreign language, but more experienced with card games. The gamers love these games the most. I think people who don't really get what it is, they're a little confused by it and maybe not so happy with it. So I don't recommend it for people who are not familiar with gaming. Uh, and not just gaming game, like, like not just gaming different card games and board games, but I mean gaming with complex card games. Okay, so this is Other Tongue One. It's fantasy themed. Um, and let's, let me show you three cards from it. This game would take too long to explain, really. I'm not gonna do that. But the knight, essentially lets you use the other player's foreign language against them. If you know a word in their language that they don't know, you're going to be able to score a point against them. Remember, you can always pause the video if you want to read this to yourself. I'm going to keep it moving. The archer. You can look at verbs on other people's cards in order to shoot them down. So verbs are something, I envision them, it means like something's in motion, right? There's movement, something's happening. So the archer gets to look for verbs and shoot those cards. And undertow. Every turn you have to say a survival phrase in your other tongue. So in this game, other tongue means your target language. 
as opposed to like mother tongue, which is your, your, the language you grew up with that you're a fluent native speaker of. Um, survival phrases are things like they help you survive in your target language. So like you would say, um, can you repeat that? Can you, can you speak more slowly? What does that word mean? Can you tell me where is the, those types of phrases are survival phrases. So every turn you have to say one of those just to stay afloat. And if you can't, you're going to lose one of your characters. One of your characters is going to die. In the other tongue games, you there's a lot of adaptability, but basically, um, at the end of the day, whoever has the most points wins. But there's different ways to play. There's different variants. Other tongue two. Other tongue two is sci-fi themed. And by the way, Other Tongue 1, 2, and 3, they're all fully compatible. Yeah, they have different backs. I really wanted to do that because it's just more artistic and more attractive. But you can just put on card sleeves to cover the backs if that really bothers you. All the games are compatible, so you can shuffle them together. There's a lot of options that you can create when you build your decks. So Other Tongue 2, sci-fi themed. Here's a card, Planetary Shield. Name a planet in your other tongue in order to stay your cards on a three plus. Stay in this game means to protect. You protect your cards from being thrown out or discarded. And three plus means you have to roll a three or higher on a six sided dice. This game comes with dice. So this is really cool. If you can name a planet in your target language, you can protect all your cards immediately. Replica. Once This is about cliches. So cliches are phrases that are say it, said over and over and over again to the point that they annoy people when you say them. So if you can say a cliched phrase or word in your target language, then you can use rule text on other character cards. So it's kind of like replicas are being manufactured and they look the same as other characters. And the Doomsday Machine. Okay, massive card here. Once during your turn, if you can speak a sentence of five words or more in your other tongue and translate it into three other languages, you may discard all the cards on the field. So we have a lot of people playing the other tongue series who can speak in multiple languages. It's really cool. So they might decide how many languages and which languages they're allowed to use during the games. A really neat way to play would be if, if you're much better with languages or gaming, you could, you could choose to use only the languages that are most difficult for you and let the other players use more languages, and that would help to level the playing field. Okay, Other Tongue 3 is steampunk themed. Here we go. Tattooer. Tattooer changes the names of other cards. Why is that important? Sometimes you can attack cards and destroy other cards if you know how to translate their names. So she lets you translate some names. That can give you a lot of greater options in terms of what you can do and the havoc you can wreak. Ideas. This lets you create new categories of words. So you can choose any category you want. If you like, I, I don't know, I can't even, if you like geography, you could make a new category called geography. Players can speak words in that category to earn points. So that opens this game up to any category of words you want. And the wheel lock pistol. Again, you can target with this one, nouns, verbs, or adjectives on other cards. So if you see a noun or verb or an adjective on another card that you want to destroy, you translate that word, use the wheel lock pistol, boom, it's gone. So that, that leaves all the words on all the cards open to being targeted, basically. Thanks so much for sticking with me. If you're enjoying this, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're moving on to Chinese Champions. This is the first game I ever made. This is the game that launched the company right here. 
and I made this because I wanted to unite my love of card gaming with my love and my need to learn Mandarin more and to learn it better and to learn it in a more fun and relaxing way. And then later, this game became so popular, but people wanted it made for other languages, and that's why I created the Other Tongue series that works for any languages. So, Chinese Champions plays very similarly to Other Tongue. Almost the same, but it's aimed more at Mandarin Chinese, and it has Mandarin Chinese vocabulary on each card. This one, I also made the artwork for, so I'm very proud of all the artwork in this uh, set. This is Premonition. You can look at the top card of any, I say stack, which is basically a deck. You can look at the top card of any stack and choose to move it to the bottom or put it back on top. So you've got the English word and it's Chinese translation and uh, pinyin pronunciation there. Paper fans, you can add one point to any character, kind of like it's cooling off. There's a lot of meaning behind these cards. I'll, I'll give you an example in this one. This is Rage. The prince has broken the king's teapot. The face of this king is a broken teapot if you turn the card upside down. There's a lot of subtle, interesting things in this, these cards and this artwork that I don't really have time to explain, but committed players have picked up on these things, and I also write stories about these games. This is another game that you really... It's best for people who are more familiar with card games and, and Mandarin Chinese. Other Tongue and Chinese Champions, probably uh, you should be maybe 12 years of age or older. Some people just buy this game because they love the art and they want to study the words. So in that case, yeah, you could definitely do this with younger children. Okay, Chinese Champions 2. Chinese Champions 2 features my own photography from traveling in China. So these are real in-China photos taken by me in multiple different provinces over the course of many years. This is a train station, and what, why I like these two cards, train station and train, is this lets you, the train will circle around the table every turn a player has to pass it to the next player, and it takes another card with it. So the train moves around and around all the players, and it moves the other cards around. So it's basically shuffling up everyone's cards. And the train station lets you control the train. So if you have the train, you can let it move or let it stop. Let it move or let it stop. And I really like this card, Memories. This one, if you can remember the name of cards in your discard pile, you can potentially get them back. And this is actually a really good memory for me. That's actually me watching the sunrise on my birthday in the waves at a beach on the coast. There's a lot of story, a lot of meaning behind these photos. If there's any photos you particularly like on your sets or any artwork, you can always leave comments for me or email me, languagecardgames at gmail.com, and we can chat about it. Okay, on to the last game, Lightner Cards. Tagline, think inside the box. These are cards that you put into your Lightner box or a similar spaced repetition system for flashcards, and it basically gamifies that process, that system, even further. It, it kind of like encourage you, encourages you to engage on a qualitatively higher plane or, or deeper, in a deeper way than if you just go through all your flashcards in a rote way, testing front and back, testing front and back, testing front and back, and just going through all of them. This gives you little challenges to complete with them. So let me give you an example of some things these will ask you to do. This is one of my favorites. Before you start the file, predict a flashcard that will be in it. So this lets you activate your prediction, your memory, your imagination, trying to think, what, what am I going to see in here today? 
This card is basically a warm-up card. So it asks you, take the flashcards out of that file, out of that level, and put them out, and do the easy ones first. And I really like this one, Fungus. If you get a flashcard wrong, you have to make some more flashcards about it, or for it, and then put those in. So the card you're really having trouble with basically multiplies in your box. These cards have a little code system that tells you where in the box to put these cards. Some go in front of flashcards, some go in the middle, some go at the end, some you do only after you have finished the box for the day. So again, this is a game for people who already know and are familiar with the Leitner Box Spaced Repetition System for Physical Flashcards. If you don't know what that is, I have a video series about it on this channel. So I really only recommend this game for people who are familiar with that and want to get more out of that or want to kind of spice that up. All right, thank you so much for watching today. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them down below. I'll see you back here next time at Language Card Games.